Today, I'm going to be giving you guys six tips in Rise of Kingdoms that I bet most of you don't know. What's going on, guys? Cheers. Okay, so here's the deal. I would be willing to bet that you don't know at least one of the tips that I'm going to be giving you in this video. If that's the case, you are obligated. It is, it's the rules to drop a thumbs up on the video. But if you knew all of the tips that I mentioned in this video, you get to call me a farmer in the comment section below. Call me a casual, call me trash, drop it down. You know what? You guys do that anyway. You know, it, it, it. anyway, before we begin, I do just want to take a moment to say thank you. We did recently hit 25,000 subscribers on the channel. That is actually incredible. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, since we reached this milestone, GamerSups has agreed to actually bump up my discount code for the next couple of days for you guys. So once once this video goes live, you guys will have a limited time to get 20% off of your order at GamerSups. Link will be down below. So if you wanted to try it, now is the best time. With that being said, let's jump back into the video. Okay, so tip number one might actually be really obvious to some of you, but I've talked to multiple players who've played this game for years, and they actually had no idea about this, myself included, and that is that the stats you get on the Commander View page actually apply to your primary and your secondary commander. So that means if I have a Guan Yu primary and a Leonidas secondary, they're going to gain a total of 1% defense, 1% health, and 1% attack because I have my Leonidas set here in the commander view. Now, I, I don't know. Am I crazy? I thought that this was only for primary commanders for the longest time. I was certain, I was positive that this was only for primary commanders. And yet, if you go ahead and test it and you send out your armies in the open field, you will see that the troop buffs do change if you set your secondary on that commander view. Okay, just to test this out, we're gonna take a look at my Guan Leo March. Okay, you can see my Guan is on the page, Leo is not. We see infantry attack is 166%. Then if we go in here and we change the commander view, we set Leonidas for the 1% attack buff, and then we go ahead and we do the same thing. Infantry attack goes up to 167. Again, I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but I always thought that this was only for primary commanders. So if you guys thought that as well, well, now you know, you can set both primary and secondary and gain the buffs for both on a single march. Now, if you knew that one already, don't worry, because these tips get more and more obscure as we go on. Later, we're going to talk about some weird things going on with Zenobia, Tamiris's debuff, and a unique way that you can use it, so make sure you stick around for those. Now, tip number two is one that I thought literally everybody knew. I thought that this was common knowledge, but apparently it is not common knowledge because I've seen a lot of errors and mistakes here in my very own KVK. And there's a reason that there is a pass on the screen guys. You can only have a hundred players reinforcing a pass at any given time. It doesn't matter if the reinforcement capacity is full or not. You could have a hundred players put a single T1 troop into this pass and you wouldn't be able to add any more troops to it, even though it could hold more theoretically there is a cap to the number of players that can be inside a pass why is this important well this is a tip for you guys because if you have a lot of marches in the pass that have let's say less than 2,000 troops that will help you in some ways if it's a Zenobia YSS March and we'll talk about that a little bit later but if you're being rallied especially double triple rallied and you can't add troops because there's a dozen players that have a hundred troops in the pass that's that's really bad. You're taking a lot of damage and you don't have the maximum amount of troops that you could to defend against that damage. The number one reason that this happens is because players will put troops in the pass and then they'll log off or they'll forget, or they just won't be paying attention. And that's really bad because sometimes if you're offline, your alliance will have to kick your troops out, which means they have to kick you out of the alliance. And if you're defending a pass and you're not in an alliance and you're offline, you know, if your alliance loses that pass, then you could be rallied. Okay. So if you're reinforcing any structure, especially passes, okay, make sure that if your troops get low, you either refresh those troops or you just remove them. Okay. Just remove them. So other players can get in because if you're hitting that cap, it's really bad. Tip number three has to do with the talent latent power, which you can see in the skill tree for any commander. And it seems to be pretty straightforward. However, it's actually not okay. This will give you upwards of 6% additional skill damage, which is different from regular skill damage. Okay. Regular skill damage is what you see on Guan Yu's primary skill. It's just direct damage factor. Your skill goes off. You hit him with damage factor, which is different from Guan Yu's fourth skill, which says additional damage factor. So in theory, this 
active skill, this damage factor of 2000 would not be affected by latent power because it's direct damage factor. This fourth skill should be affected by latent power because it's additional damage factor, except it's not. Yeah, that's right. This fourth skill on Guan Yu is not affected by latent power whatsoever. And in fact, Guan Yu is not the only commander who has additional damage factor that is unaffected by latent power. So this top row is all commanders that benefit from the latent power talent. Now, some of these commanders don't have the skill tree, which means it would only apply to them if they were secondary commanders. But this bottom row is commanders that have a, a seemingly the same sort of additional skill damage, but it actually gets no benefit from latent power at all. You see Zangyu here in the, in the honorable mentions. The reason that he's down here is because I actually don't know if he benefits or not. I, I'm going to be, I'm going to keep it honest with you guys. Okay. I actually have no idea, but I will say that there is no viable talent build that Zangyu can have that you would put latent power in, especially because you're probably using Chandra Gupta, which doesn't have a benefit for that either. What I'm trying to say is even if it does affect his additional skill damage, okay, which you guys can clarify in the comment section below, if you know the answer, even if it did, he has so many better options for talents that it doesn't even matter. So I encourage you guys, if you're using any of these commanders in the blue avoid tier right here, okay. If you're using these commanders, go in and check the talent builds for their primaries. Okay. Make sure you're not wasting talents on latent power because that's three talent points you can put somewhere else. Okay. Now tip number four has to do with Isun Sin, specifically his third skill. Okay. The second portion says when fewer than 50% of units remain, troops deal 20% increased damage. What this skill description doesn't tell you is that this is triggered based on the total number of troops that are in a specific flag fort pass whatever it is not just healthy troops okay so if you leave troops in a flag it gets rallied and you don't refresh that march you just leave them in there there's going to be plenty of slightly wounded troops dead troops things that happen because of that first rally all of those troops even though they're not participating in the battle anymore when you're rallied a second time still count towards this damage bonus. And this is why I said earlier that if you have a Zenobia YSS, sometimes it's good to leave some of those marches with lower troops remaining because it does aid in getting this damage bonus off sooner. And we can prove this, right? We can prove this because we can go into the battle log of this past defense with Zenobia Isun Sin. We could take a look here. And if we jump to the second turn, the second turn, of this battle, you can see that Isun Sin's third skill pops off, right? So how could in a single turn, only a single turn has passed, right? Because on turn two, it's activated. We've only lost like 20,000 units here, right? The, the unit changes is only 20,000 per turn. And yet still we gain that bonus 20% damage on turn two. And that remains for the entirety of this rally. Okay. So that's one of the reasons that Isun Sin is so exceptional as a secondary commander in a garrison, just make sure if your troops get too low that you make room for other players. Okay. Once that buff pops off, it doesn't matter. It's going to stay for the rest of the rally anyway, even if you remove your troops. Okay. Tip number five has to do with Tamiris and her famous fourth skill that adds poison stacks to the target. Okay. These stacks cause the target to take 3% extra skill damage. And if this skill is at five, there's a 100% chance that every single turn she will apply this stack of poison. Now, what if I told you, you can apply these stacks to the target for virtually free, right? It costs pretty much nothing to add these stacks to the target. I'm sure many of you guys might be interested. So how exactly is it done? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. You take a single troop. It can be a tier one troop. It doesn't matter. Okay. Preferably cavalry because they march a bit faster. All right. You take a single troop with Tamiris in the march and you just suicide it into the pass or into the fort or into whatever it is that you want to hit. Okay. They will gain a stack of points. Poison, which means they will take 3% extra skill damage. So to make this more effective, you would have to throw Tamiris into that rally over and over and over again, and just, you know, basically kill a ton of tier one cavalry. Now it's only one troop at a time. So, you know, at most you're going to kill a hundred tier one cavalry doing this method. And this method is mainly useful if your city is right next to an objective that's being rallied. Okay. And this is something that we saw many times in our current KVK. If we came from the pass up top here and we are rallying 
seeing this fort this player saber or cobra or anybody who's close by with a tamiris preferably with five skill points in her fourth skill they can just click and drag that tamiris march over and over and over again to basically instantly hit the rally and cause that rally to either keep that three percent skill damage uh taken debuff on the rally at all times or if they're lucky you know that stack will stay for a few seconds and you can actually continue to add that stack over and over and over again and of course it helps if other players have tamiris and things like that but yeah for the cost of a you know a handful of t1 cavalry units uh you can actually apply a pretty powerful debuff to a particular rallying enemy uh, and it doesn't really cost you anything. And finally, my last tip has to do with Zenobia. Now, this is a really weird phenomenon that members of my alliance picked up on during our current KBK, and that is that Zenobia YSS when defending a pass or a fort or a flag or anything like that assuming that the captain of this garrison with zenobia yss has an optimal talent build with good equipment and max kvk tech which is what you should be having if you are defending something as crucial as a pass seven and kvk that captain will never die in a rally scenario whether it's a single rally or a double rally okay so the captain of this pass is royal okay and he's the same royal from a few videos ago that actually got imprisoned and rallied go ahead and check that out if you missed it but because he has such good technology all royal has to do is put his army into this pass that's it he can log off for a day two days doesn't matter this army will never die no matter how many times it is rallied double rally single rally whatever as long as the pass is consistently reinforced over and over and over again the captain's army will never die now this is something that is pretty unique to Zenobia alone it may also apply to Richard as well but Lord knows you should not be using Richard in a garrison scenario but the way that damage is distributed amongst the troops within a particular structure the fewer the troops that you have the less damage that army is specifically going to take and we know this is the case right because otherwise there would pretty much never be troops under a certain troop level right you would never be able to put 300 troops into uh into a, a garrison because as soon as the skill shot hits it would wipe out all the players that have you know 300 troops in there so since you're taking damage proportionate to how many troops you have in the pass when Zenobia gets down anywhere from 400 to a thousand troops and we're talking t5s here the captain doesn't take enough damage from a single rally or a double rally to actually die and to get sad faced out of that pass and the reason that this is unique i think to just zenobia is because she's just so good and so defensive and she also heals herself right she's healing while she's in the pass we noticed this because we had our garrison captain rex licious uh he was in this pass for a long period of time okay and you can take a look at the troops he only had 700 units in this in this past rally right and this lasted for a long time okay and this happened over and over and over again and you know yeah sure you could refresh if you wanted to but he really didn't have to okay he really didn't have to you could just leave them in there even if you only have four five six seven hundred troops left right you could just leave it there and Zenobia will just heal enough to where she just doesn't die so now you might be thinking okay Omniarch well if that's the case then how do you actually defeat a garrison captain if it's Zenobia YSS who has good gear and max tech well the first way that it would lose is that if the pass isn't reinforced properly right if the enemy is just running out of troops then eventually that captain is going to die the second way is to start just swarming it just swarm it with everything you have right and you don't want to swarm it when it's full okay just just, just don't do it just don't do it it's not gonna work you're gonna get wrecked you are gonna get wrecked okay but if the pass or the fort or the flag or whatever is extremely low in troops left right maybe the reinforcements are coming slower and slower and slower you can actually just completely end it by starting a swarm right and again you have to own the fields you have to have that advantage okay so this is it's difficult to do and this is part of the reason why Zenobia YSS is just so insane because you could just leave the garrison captain there and they can log off and do their thing as long as it's reinforced everything will be all good now you might be taking shitty trades right so don't think that this is like in a perfect defense that's never gonna fail you can still take bad trades and still have the captain not die so keep that in mind but I think this is a useful tip to know because if you're getting garrison captain has to log off you can kind of just let them sit there right of course you want to be able to contact them if you need to but you can still take full advantage of that Zenobia YSS as long as you keep it reinforced look at this we got a rally on the way huh we've been fighting at this pass for a long long time so yeah there's a 
there's a lot going on here anyway guys if you learned something and if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into that algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it if you knew every single one of these tips then you are probably a rise of kingdoms veteran who watches a ton of content here on youtube so you have earned the badge of honor you can go down there and you can roast me in the comment section it's fine i i get it i get it okay i click baited you and and i deserve to get roasted all right if you're new here subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video also don't forget there is a limited time 20 percent discount on gamer subs link will also be in the description below there's also going to be a link down there to download rise of kingdoms for your pc using a program called blue stacks while we wait for the official release of rise of kingdoms on pc so if you want to try it now link is down there as well and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace